theory, I understood what this frame syncing was going to be, theoretically. Uh, this is a technology that uh, the founders of Cream Sauce have been working on for many years. The first inception of it was actually about 12 years ago, where we used a flash bandit to actually sync to the camera shutter. That was used specifically for preventing frame tearing. Where we're at now with Vortex 8, it opens up a whole different set of potential applications. We've just explored a few of those, and when I saw the first examples of that um, in the testing phase, uh, it's kind of hard to wrap your head around what you're looking at because I've never looked at that kind of thing before. Well, I've always been a believer that any imagery that's created in camera is somehow more believable to the viewer. So you're not, you're not using trickery to, to try and convince them that there's, that world exists. No matter how fantasy it, may, it is that you've constructed, even you know, a, a, world, a fantasy world, but if it looks like you believe it you know, as a viewer, then you, you're taken on a ride, uh, which is much more convincing from you know, a cinematography perspective. That's what I'm thinking. Two, one, action. So we had the idea, the creative was there. It existed even, you know, when I was approached. But knowing that there's this new technology there, um, we had to do some tests and, and, you know, personally, I wanted to see what they were capable of or what, what the, the technology was capable of. Um, and it was after doing the test that actually a lot of the ideas changed and came from the tests because I personally didn't know that it could do such a thing. Flash frames mode, one frame off, one frame on, and go. When I discovered that w we can sort of hook these lights up to the camera and you can sort of create a, a, a message with the light, whilst messing with the speed of the action, that started getting me excited. So that's why I was really keen to jump on board and go, okay, so let's have a look at what, what they can do. Initially, this project uh, began as, as quite a simple project, you know, sourcing a studio and controlled environment and everything without any locations. And as it evolved, uh, uh, working with, with some of the guys in Cream Source, we began uh, talking about this, uh, the, the syncing uh, that the guys are doing, the frame syncing. Um, we got to see some samples of it uh, that the guys were developing in the warehouse. And I was just so amazed by uh, what we were seeing that, you know, I was like, okay, cool, we need to do whatever we have to to get this frame syncing in, in as part of the video. So, 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 so he turns, it's as if he's running this way now, and he turns this way. The timing was great. We were so close to getting the technology locked down for this new feature um, and we needed a testing ground for it. So it worked out really well that we could implement all of these things into some existing ideas. And then off the back of the testing, we again developed a whole range of other ideas. Rafa, we're gonna just have a try with the flashes. Nathan, can, um, can you, uh, can you trigger right, please? Yeah. This is a song that I've written, produced by Eddie Munji. It's a concept that sort of evolved uh, step by step. First we came up with like a lullaby idea which introduced one of the characters, which is the mother of all these rappers that were killing on, on the track. Uh, and then it evolved into bringing Paulo Escobar in, into the track and, and the devil. Uh, so we've got this like, this, this play between the devil, Pablo Escobar and myself and the mothers of all the rappers trying uh, for us not to kill them all. <laughs> You know, you have all these characters playing across, it's like a story, right? So you have different characters on the story. You got Pablo Escobar, you got the devil, you got the rapper, you got the mother, you know. Using color and, and, and light to introduce those characters was quite, a new, you know, could be a quite cool way to introduce them. The thing that was fun about it is that this was a, a, a lighting heavy project. It was all, uh, all of the, the uh, creative elements, we could assist by telling the story through light. 
it's cool for this super tight stuff, you know, just kind of... That I'm a big fan of the red and I like the look of it. So I knew that would have been probably one of the choices. But also we, early stages, we, we spoke about the capability of using Phantom or a high-speed camera. So that was, that was set, you know, I knew I didn't want to shoot everything on it because I do like the aesthetic of, a, you know, the, the red and so we knew it was going to be a mix. When Bruno and I um, chatted about how we approach it, um, with the flex, uh, obviously, you know, it requires um, uh, more light uh, to be able to achieve higher speeds and with the limited space in which we were shooting, we had to separate the subject from backgrounds. Yeah. When you go, hey, we're going to shoot 800 frames per second, first thing I thought of was M40, 1000 hertz ballast. We're going to need that as a soft thing coming through somewhere, you know. No, we didn't need it, you know. We just had plenty of grunt with SpaceX's vortexes over top, stuff like that. It's great. Being able to create a lighting atmosphere that was in line with the narrative was kind of crucial to this. Um, and I think, I think we achieved it. I think we achieved it with um, effects, transitions, uh, with colour volume. I think all of those things helped the overall direction. Um, and the coolest thing about these lights actually is, is, which we had a lot of fun playing and tuning, fine tuning it, the fact that you can sync to a frame at each flash, you know, and it's unbelievable, right? So, so it was amazing to like, you know, be so precise at how many frames you wanted off and on and what light you wanted to come next, what color you wanted to come next. It just sounded so surreal that he could actually just go and tweak it and yep, it's done. You know, it can even be followed by a gap. Yeah. And then another. I was blown away at how specific it can be with, with where you can put your light in terms of what frames you can choose to put light and what frames to not put light. Um, and then syncing multiple lights to give you lights on for four frames and lights off for six frames. Okay. Happy? Yep. All right. Let's move on. So Pablo, you know, he's running from the cops at one stage and, and, and the coolest thing we were able to play with the light at, at its best using the, the high frame rate. Let's have Let's a look at what the, what the light looks like. I'd not ever done anything like what we did before with the police chase and the turning around with the gun, where we were able to sort of replicate the lighting from the police lighting as though it was in real time whilst our character was uh, running and spinning around in slow motion. That stuff was awesome. You know, the mother scene was we, we didn't want to give it away because obviously the the singer was is playing all the roles, but we didn't want to, you know, introduce him straight away as a woman. So we thought, you know, it would be really cool um, to introduce him with a lighting effect, you know, a transition, lighting transition to reveal, you know, he goes from this glowing blonde, you know, warmth into like this, when we get closer, we can see it reveals this beard <laughs> guy on a wig, you know. I can't recall any project where we've gone and done um, fire and high, high frames with fire and then we've gone to you know, a gun firing, to a car moving, to water falling, light and shadow changing. Every setup was a, a big lighting gag. You know. I suppose it was a good test for um, cream sauce. With the Vortex 8, you can not just change the lighting and the tone, but you can move it. So you can sort of move the lighting across and um, 
I could almost tell a, a, a metaphoric story through through the lights whilst you're filming your um your um narrative. Oh. Oh, you're an R oh, you're an RGB. I still find it hard to to understand how that's possible for a light to do, but when you're syncing it, you know, to the camera, it's pretty pretty amazing. And what you're able what we're able to see on a creative level, like a strobing effect, you know, at a high frame rate, is certainly n like nothing else you're able to create with any combination of of equipment. But now with with lights that are not only enable you to shoot freely uh, without any sort of flicker or any sort of contamination, but also lights that are enable you to adjust color temperature, which is like has been the newer newer of the technologies that, that uh, at your fingertips with uh, high speed, uh, which is fantastic. But then on top of that, to be able to control a light and sync a light coming on for a specific frame is insane. It's just insane to be able to control it to that degree. It's quite liberating. It, it, what, what it does enable you to do is become totally creative and figure out what you can do on a creative level as opposed to what you have to do technically to make a shot work. So for the, for the performance, you could just do something like this. Orange, a pink. I will just point out that um, after 20 years, and um, I still enjoy learning new things every day, but you do start getting used to, you know, you're chatting to the director and the DOP and they're saying, you know, we're going to be doing something new here, you know, this is going to be a one take this, or we're going to do some lighting like that. And you smile and wave and go, yeah, well, you know, I've done that before, no worries, let's do it. You know, it's not very often you get to do things that are like 100% new. Slow motion playing back in uh, 25 frames or 24 frames per second with lights then flickering in real time is a bit hard to <laughs> comprehend what's going on. So it was, it's exciting. It's exciting to understand what the technology is and what the possibilities are for it moving forward. That's it. Sure? Yeah.